This is the Angel Accelerator powered by Fledge, and the topic today is seeing the future. Last week, we included that we ended on this quote. All right, it's difficult to make predictions, especially about the future. It's actually difficult just to say who said this first. I think this is a quote from a Dutch politician from ages ago, but it's a, it's a really good quote for this, this topic, right? So we're trying to figure out what's going to happen, not just in the distant future, but the near future. And hindsight, of course, is 2020. So I'm going to bring up a lot of examples today. And you're just going to go, that's obvious. That, that was obvious it was going to succeed or that was obvious it was going to fail. But we're going to look for this next case at 2006 to 2020. And we're going to see how obvious it really was. Right. So we're going to start with something that's not startups. We're going to start with something that almost destroyed the entire economy. All right. This is the, the subprime mortgage problem of 2007, 2008 which really did almost take down the entire, you know, uh, the entire economy of the US and Europe. So here's a chart. It's hard to find these old charts on the internet, but here's a chart showing a few things, but basically the, uh, the growth rate of housing prices in the US from 1991 to 2005. I cut it off at 2005. And clearly it's growing. Clearly, it's getting, it's getting to be a hot market. And if we went back in time and looked at the news, or if you can remember back then, people were saying, like, real estate's getting pretty, pretty warm and, and frothy and, and hot. And sometimes you'd hear the word bubble. But, uh, oh, sorry. And, and right now, I what I would like you to do is open the chat window, because I'm going to ask you a whole bunch of questions in the next 15, 20 minutes. And so first question here. Uh, who sold their, who purposely sold their house in 2005 or 2006 because they thought that the housing market was so hot that it was going to go down dramatically and they could buy back another house you know, really cheap. So who here, stick it in the chat window. We got one, right? Um, and there's like 25 people here. Anybody else? Anybody sell their house because the market was so good that they were going to, you know, make 20, 30, 40% as the market crashed afterwards. Right. And, and uh, this person who said, I did, you seriously, that was your thought of you were going to sell the house because the market was high or you just happened to move that, that year. All right. Well, here's what happened next. Right. So it hit its peak in, in 05 ish and then started to go down and then went down a lot. Right. It went down a lot, a lot. Right. And if we remember what happened, you know, banks were failing. The Fed, the Federal Reserve was, was uh, literally ba bailing out everybody they could. The U.S. government decided to put $780 billion into the economy to keep it going. Uh, the Federal Reserve uh, printed $4 trillion out of nothing in order to save the system. And it felt really bad, right? It felt like the world was falling apart in 07 and 08. You didn't know, you didn't, we didn't know it was the bottom at 08. We were hoping it was, but it could have gotten worse and worse and worse. And then it got better again. And in fact, it got so much better again that housing prices right now are higher than they were in 2006. We have gotten back to the top of this of this uh, this run, and yet you don't read in the paper that we're in a bubble again, and nobody is talking about a crash due to the housing market right now, or very few people uh, are talking about the crash right now. And then again, if we look back in time, who was who was saying who was not just saying that this is gonna crash, who was doing something about it? Who was making an investment that was uh, betting in this direction of down, which is a hard thing to do at times? And the answer was two people. There were two people in the United States who saw this coming and who figured out a way to bet against it. And if you've, if you've not seen The Big Short, the movie, it's awesome. Uh, the book is even better. Uh, and it's one of those rare cases where you can watch the movie and love it and still love the book. Uh, I watched the movie like three times before I read the book. And then I watched the movie and it was even better because then I knew the details. But there were really only two people who, who figured this out. The rest of the characters in the book, uh, the rest of the characters in the movie, the movie doesn't really go through this, but the book does. The rest of the people talked about in the, in the movie heard about it from those two people. And then there was uh, what was called the big short. They made a big bet. And the people who did that made billions of dollars. It was, it was an amazing bet for them. 